Dravet falls in the category of the pediatric epilepsies, the epilepsies that are genetically determined. And what this means is that Dravet patients have one of their two genes coding for an ion channel that is ineffective. So healthy people have two healthy copies. Patients with Dravet have only one healthy copy of a gene that's called SCN1A. As a result of that, there is an insufficient functioning of very important neurons in the brain called the GABAergic interneurons, and that leads to seizures. And in Dravet syndrome, it's not just one type of seizures. These are seizures that typically start in the first months of life, often provoked by temperature elevation, a fever, a hot bath, a hot day, and then they become multiform. Different types of seizures start to appear. So it's a complex seizure disease, but then there's more. On top of that, there is also um, developmental delays, milestones that are missed in terms of motor function, in terms of language development, cognitive development. And that really starts to manifest itself around the age of one to two years, becomes very manifest during the school age years. Um, and these patients can end up with, with quite severe cognitive delays, sometimes also um, uh, motor function deficits. So that's what Dravé is. Um, the way that our technology approaches this is as follows. These patients have one healthy gene and that's what we're focusing on. What we have come to appreciate is that in normal circumstances, our gene function is not 100% turned on. It's like your heart rate. Your basic heart rate is not your maximum heart rate. So there's always a little bit of an option to tune it up a little bit. How is that level of the activity of the gene maintained? Well, it turns out that there are transcript from your DNA, so RNA, that inter modulate how that DNA can be transcribed into RNA, which then can be transcribed into a protein you need. And that also means that if you develop an antisense oligonucleotide, it can then interact with those regulatory RNAs and remove them from the, the gene activation complex. In other words, in other words, what we do is we develop an antisense oligonucleotides that interacts with those regulatory RNAs and inhibits the inhibitor. It blocks the blocker, it removes the breaks. And so you can tune up the activity of your gene um, a moderate amount. I would say you can maybe double it, maybe threefold increasing it. So these are not huge increases, which we think is a good thing because it means that we're staying within the physiological regulation of how genes normally function. So an antisense oligonucleotide that will be administered intrathecally, so directly into the spinal canal. Um, there are other drugs that are administered that way that will flow via the cerebrospinal fluid to the brain, enter the cells and there interact with the, the gene expression machinery to increase the expression from the healthy gene. Thank you.